Hello, this is part two of the electric circuit lessons. Now yesterday, we had several challenges where we explored making a electric circuit light a bulb up using a battery. And uh, you had a couple challenges. We're gonna follow up today with a few more challenges. We're gonna start by making an electric circuit. Now, I have found that uh, many students sometimes look at things, but they don't see the things that I'm talking about. When I say uh, we're needing three wires, that means three wires. You could hook it up with two, but we're going to actually use two of our experiments in our Pearson Interactive Science book. And the first one is on page 118, and it's called Inquiry, Try It. What can electricity flow through? So we're gonna set up a circuit using these parts right here. Now what I don't like about this book is it has a picture, it looks like this aluminum foil is wrapped around these wires. Don't put the foil on yet. You need to check these things off and do them in this order. So first we're gonna make a circuit, okay? Then we're gonna predict the different objects. And I'm, I'm gonna make my chart look like this, light or no light. What objects are we talking about? We're talking about the spoon, the paper clip, the index card, the foil, and the penny. So these five objects, you need to predict first whether they will light or no light on this particular circuit. And then three, we test them. So you make a prediction first, and then you test it. So I want you just for a second, uh, what the last thing you do is you classify down here which things the object flows through. Oh, by the way, there's a name for that. And every kid in this grade level better know that. If electricity flows through it, that means it's a good what? Conductor. And if electricity does not flow through it, it is an insulator. Okay. So, I want you to take a look just for a second. Let's study this diagram. All right, we have a battery, one wire that goes to a bulb. The other wire goes out and just stops. The third wire goes out and stops. So I want to see three wires. I know this will light up if you just use two, but that's not our goal today. Our goal today is to make an apparatus, a circuit, with an open switch that we can put things in to test to see if they are conductors or insulators. I want to take a look at this material first. And I have some set up right here. And what you see right here are three wires. Let me just show it to you. Okay, so here's my battery holder. And I've got my wires hooked up. And you notice there's three wires. But what's missing is the battery. And this is a one and a half volt. And when you look at your battery holder, if your teacher hasn't already put it in there, you'll notice that it fits a certain way. On this end is the positive, and on that end is the negative. You can see both positive and negative terminals or ends of your battery holder. So there's a spring that goes against the flat part. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and I want to make sure it's down. I was at a school the other day, and I couldn't get it to work. Someone had put tape on the end of the battery. And we know tape is a good insulator. All right, so if this is set, I have a battery, a wire, a battery, a wire, a bulb holder, and if it's set, I should be able to touch it and light up. Touch it and light up. But that's not our goal today. Our goal today is to test things in between this gap. All right, let me show you one more thing that might go wrong. We learned yesterday that a light bulb has to have energy coming in and going out. So look how the bottom metal touches the bottom and the side metal touches the side. So our two contacts are bottom and side. Now you wanna be careful not to unscrew these bulbs because this bulb um, is different than what you have. You have some bulbs that actually come apart when you screw them. This is how it's supposed to be set up. You can look up here, or you can look in your book, okay? But there are several ways to mess up how you hook this together. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, check it out. 
You don't need to use tape on these because these are designed to be pushed down and for the wire to slide through. See that? Now, what's interesting about this is the wire slides through both sides of it. This actually takes two people to do it correctly. Okay? So, I'm looking here at this. Let me take this one out. First of all, your wire is what's called insulated wire. Insulated wire. Now, what do I mean by that? Take a look. Here is the wire, the metal part, that's covered in plastic. So I can hold this wire without being shocked. Now, we want to make sure, though, that the metal touches metal. So we have metal on metal, so it conducts electricity. That's very important, metal on metal. So this is called insulated wire because it has the plastic on it. All right, here's my connector. And you see how it looks from the side when I push it down? When I push it down, there's a gap. All right, this is from the side. Look at it. You're going to need two people, one person to push like that and another person to straighten the wire. The wire has to be straight and push it through. I don't know if I can even get this in here. Let's see if one person, oh, well, I got lucky. Now, it has to go through both sides. I don't know how many students we've seen that don't get it through both sides. See how it goes through both sides? You see that? Both sides. So many kids are going to do this. They're just going to poke it down one side and say, I'm done. But if you do that, it comes right out. Both sides. All right? Well, that's your challenge. Hook up your circuit, and then we're going to start testing your items. When you finish with your uh, testing of the objects that are listed in the book, you might want to test some of the objects that are around your desk or in your art box. And now we're going to get ready to take a look at the next lesson, which is making a switch. And it's on page 134, and it's pretty interesting. Take a look at this. You have the same materials, but how can a switch make a complete circuit? And basically, we're going to use the same circuit that you've completed. And that circuit is a source, a path, an appliance, and two open leads right here. And then you're going to make the switch. Now, the switch ends up being made with an index card. And I'll show you what I mean. An index card, two brass fasteners, and a paper clip. But I will show you how mine turned out. Okay, here's my index card with two brass fasteners, and I can move this back and forth. And the, really, the mystery of this is what's on the other side. You're going to get just a few seconds to look at this. Ready? How about five seconds? One, two, three, four, five. So do you think that you can make this switch? And if you do it right, you can hook this up either to the back side of it. Okay. Okay, I've hooked my two wires up on the back, and there's no light until I close the switch and the light comes on, and I open it, and the light goes out. Closed, open. Closed, open. And so the question is, how can a switch let electricity flow through a circuit? Go ahead and try this challenge. Okay, so we've been in the rooms testing uh, our circuits on different objects. And so I thought we might test it on, on me. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's, yeah. Try my, uh, come, let's try my ears. So one wire to each ear and nothing. So my head must be in what? In insulator. Insulator. Uh, what about my mustache? Try my mustache. What about, did it light up? No. No, my mustache must be in... Insulator. Oh, and if you notice, right here, I have a, I have a uh, silver filling. Now, this is only dangerous if I bite your finger. All right. Uh, 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 u
It's, it's a, a conductor. conductor. So it lit up, uh, the light lit up, so the silver in my mouth must be a what? Conductor. A conductor. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, don't try that at home, though. <laughs> So we had a chance to make a, a little tester of our own here. Kind of looks like this, and this tester uh, has a source, and uh, has a light, and has some wires. And since I'm using a 9-volt battery, I went ahead and put a little resistor in here to uh, not make so much current flow through, because I didn't want to pop my lights. But if I put these two together, it should light up. So my battery, my resistor, and here's my path. And if I put these two together, we get the lights that light up. Maybe if I can turn this, you can see this even better if I turn this light off. Here we go. And so we get this, and these guys light up. So I can test different objects like a plastic spoon or a penny or a piece of aluminum foil, or we can test our pencil. So here's my pencil. So is it an insulator or a conductor? Well, that's a kind of a trick question, because what part? Let's try the wood. The wood and the wood, and we get no light. So the wood must be an insulator. All right, there's a metal part of the pencil called the ferrule. Let's hook it up. Here's a ferrule. And Here's a ferrule. Let's see what we got here. Let me zoom in on this so you can see a little bit better. The ferrule and the ferrule, and we, we get it to light up. Now, sometimes there's paint or, or lacquer over the metal, but I can get it to light up. So the metal ferrule is a good conductor. All right, what about the eraser, you say? Well, here's the eraser. Eraser to eraser, I get nothing. And that leaves us the last part of the pencil. And most kids will call this part of the pencil the lead. Well, I don't like to use the word lead because pencils at one time had lead in them. But pencils today don't have lead because lead is pretty poisonous and dangerous. Lead has been replaced by graphite. And graphite, if I just take it here, I can, we can use it to draw with or I can put the graphite down here on this piece of cardboard. Graphite is a, a, a material that is in the middle of the pencil. So let's see if graphite is a conductor. So I can hook it here pretty easily. All right, but I got to find another way. Oh, well, I took my pocket knife and I cut through. And you see right here, I cut through. I've, I've hooked up the, the tip of the graphite. And I've hooked this through here, and I should be able to latch on to this graphite, and we'll see what happens if it lights up. Look at that. Pretty cool. So graphite is a conductor, even though it's not a metal. We have the graphite going through and completing the circle. All right, the last thing that uh, I'm going to try, and we might have to turn the lights out for this to work. So let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I get a lot of graphite here, and if I can see if I can just touch the graphite, just touch it to that black, and see if I can get the lights to come on at all. So I'm touching here and here. Oh look, you can see it light up a little bit. Let me turn the house lights out completely. Lights are out, and, oh I can see it. I, can, I might even be able to block this light out a little bit more here. Here we go. Check this out. Ready? So the, the electricity will actually even flow through the graphite. Pretty cool. Graphite, a conductor of electricity. Speaking of electricity, let's have the lights back. So that's something simple you can make and you can test. 